Well, welcome back to State of the Map. Um, we have another talk coming from Tuka Hastrup and Johan Lindquist. They're going to be talking about collection and use of data at entrances of buildings. So really looking forward to the talk, gentlemen, and let's do this. Hello, and welcome to our presentation about collecting and using data about entrances. My name is Tuukka Hastrup, my company is Sproutverse, and I have developed the tool Gatesal together with my colleague Henry Seyo from MistMap. And now I will give first uh, the word to uh, my colleague Johan, who has developed the uh, data collection tool. On to you, Johan. All right, thanks Tuukka. So I'm Johan Lindqvist from Forum Virium Helsinki. And Forum Virium Helsinki is an innovation company owned entirely by the city of Helsinki, doing different projects and, and trying different things out related to smart city development. Uh, and among other things, uh, also city logistics. We've had a couple of city logistics projects where we have been looking at looking at the routing of the last 50 meters. Uh, first, these new solutions in, in uh, city logistics starting 2018 and uh, where we, we made the first versions of the, of the software that we are about to show you. And now this uh, logistics accessibility data Logada project, which will continue until next week, spring. Sorry, next year, spring. Uh, and the previous project, we made lots of different pilots in, in different, different areas of city logistics. This new project, we are, we are more laser focused on, on this software and the problem that we are, we are trying to solve with it. So the problem is actually this, that when you are using some kind of navigation software, you usually get good instructions to get to the right city block and to get next to the destination that you are, you are going to but it usually does not really tell you where is the entrance, which is the entrance that you are looking for. Uh, and also, what are the circumstances around there? Are there some narrow gates, barriers, steps, anything like that? And we wanted to see that if we could provide this, this information, then how, how big an improvement could that be to the logistics drivers' daily lives? Now, we quickly found out that the OpenStreetMap provides a very good data model for saving actually all the data that we need and also for then uh, routing, routing to the entrances. But the actual data was missing to a large extent from Helsinki. So we decided to, to uh, provide a solution for the navigation. And in order to do that, we also needed a solution for collecting the data. Uh, now the data collection here actually means that we have to go out in the street and see from outside where are the entrances. This is data that, that is not visible from any, any satellite imagery and it's very difficult to dig out of, of official documents and stuff like that. So we tried out some different tools, but we didn't really find anything that was, was suited to our specific needs. So in the end, we, we decided to develop our own, own software, which we called OLMAP, or Open Logistics Map. Okay, now I'm going to give a short practical demo on this Open Logistics Map, or OLMAP, data collection tool. So I'm standing here in front of the Maria 01 Startup Center, which is an old hospital co complex where we have many buildings with actually only one street address and a quite confusing entrance addressing scheme. So it's a very good, very good destination for us. Now I'm going to start documenting by documenting this building passage here behind me. And I'm going to do that by taking a photograph first. Uh, now I, in the photograph, I want, of course, some of, the, some of the scenery around the doorway so it's easy to recognize like this. And when I'm happy with the photo, I just accept it here. And then I will move on to, to select the position of this new feature. Now, uh, you can see my own position according to the GPS here, which is slightly off. And also, of course, I want to document the position of the feature, not my own position. So I will drag this, this icon here to the right place. I will select here. And now next I can relate this new data point to, to whatever features we already have in OpenStreetMap or in the official uh, address registry. So in this case, we have the gate there in OpenStreetMap already. Uh, and I can select the, the address of this whole complex like this, and then I'm done. And next, I can, I can uh, select what kind of feature am I documenting here and give some more information on that. So in this case, I will select gate. I will create a new gate here, and I will give the access. In this case, it's a, it's a publicly accessible gate. And we don't have any buzzers or key codes here. I could give the measurements, but unfortunately, I forgot my measuring tape today, so we'll, we'll have to return to that later. Uh, now I'm done, I will save, I'm done, and now we can see that the image that I just took is uploading, 
and now it's uploaded, so now we can see the new data point here on the map. Uh, with the information I, I just input and also in a easily copyable format, so you can just put the whole package to OSM once, once you're ready to add it there. Uh, also, I can zoom into this image here and look at different details if I, if I need to. Uh, yes, that's all about that. Let's move on to the next feature. Now, here beside the passage, we see this informational map, and we like to add these or also to the, to the map, uh, because they usually contain up-to-date information on the routes in the, in the building complex. So I'm going to take a new picture of this. So I'm happy with the picture. I will again place it on the map here beside the passage. And in this case, the map is, of course, uh, documenting the whole, entire address. So I will select this address here. And I will save this as an info board of the type map. Okay, the image is now uploading, and very soon we should see a new new data point here on the map. And I can open that if I can hit it. And now we see the map here. Good. Now here we can see that the building passage actually shows the traces of what happens when we don't have the up-to-date information on the limitations of the route. A little too big car. Okay, so now we're here at the inner yard, and we are already seeing the next info map here. And as sometimes happens in the changing cityscape, we see that the addressing scheme has actually been updated, so the, the previous one is no longer in force. So now we need to document this new map here. And it again happens in the same way. Like so. And we do the same process again. This time we are over here. And as you can see, my position on the GPS is again very much off. And now that we have found out that the previous information that we recorded is actually out of date, it's a good idea, of course, to hide that from the map. Like so. All right, let's move on to the next point. Okay, here we are now in front of the main entrance to the startup complex and also to the startup complex restaurant named Starter. And I'm going to document the entrance and then also the restaurant as a workplace. Like so, again, I start with the picture and try to get a bit of context around the entrance and then I place it on the map, again, in a position quite different from my own. Now, in this case, luckily, we have all these all these points of interest already in, in OpenStreetMap, so I can just relate this to, to the map, the points that are already there and done, and I will add the entrance information here. In this case, this is obviously publicly access accessible, and it is the main entrance of this building. I save and done. Now the data point is being created with the picture, and if I open it, I can see the picture here. And I can add the information on the workplace, meaning the, the starter restaurant. Uh, now, since I related this to the already existing data point, I get the, the name here for free, and I can select the type, like so. And at this point, I could add the delivery hours and the delivery instructions for this workplace, which we will do later. But right now, I don't have them available, so, so I will not save them here. That information would then be saved in our own, own database and provided to the delivery drivers there. Not true open screen map. Okay, now next we're going to document the delivery entrance of this, both the complex and the restaurant. And again, we're following the same, same procedure. We want a picture with a bit of context, and once we're happy with that, we select the position here. And we can see that this entrance also already is in OpenStreetMap, so we will select that. Uh, and we will select the campus and the restaurant. Uh, and also the official address. And we will give the information of this new, uh, new entrance here. This is a delivery entrance. Like so. And we will save it. Now the data point is being updated, and we can then select the workplace that we created earlier. 
and now we can link these entrances and select how they are used by this particular work bicycle. So in this in this case, this is the main entrance, and it is not used for deliveries, uh, but rather for for customers only. Okay, and we can link this other entrance, uh, and we can select it here, and and we mark this as the main delivery entrance for this this workplace. Okay, now depending on what vehicle you are arriving with, you may not always be able to do the unloading directly in front of the entrance where you are going. So we want to also document the unloading places to allow drivers to choose where to park the vehicle. Now to do this, I will again take a picture, again trying to get as much context as possible to make it make it informative for the drivers. And I will just link this to the address here, and I will mark it as an unloading place, and I will just create a plain unloading place now without any more specific information. Now when we get the data point here on the map, I can then select the entrances to which it is suitable to deliver goods from this unloading place. In this case, I will link both of the entrances we just created. Okay, as we saw earlier, the building passage that we were documenting is not a very convenient way to get there uh, if, you have, if you are arriving with a big truck or something. So now I'm standing here in front of a wider gate that can, can accommodate bigger vehicles and also access the same, the same inner yard. Now I can save this information by linking access points to the unloading place that I just created. Now in this case I will create two access points, one in front of the building passage where we were earlier and one in front of this wider gate here, like that. Thank you, Johan. Now that we have collected the data, I will tell you how we make use of the data. So GateSolve is an application for reaching the right entrance. To tell you a bit about my background, I'm a software developer specializing in open source, open APIs and open data. Um, I was a Code for Europe fellow in 2013, and since then I've been helping organizations participate in OpenStreetMap. Uh, DigiTransit was the project that I did. It's uh, the 100% open journey planning platform and service, uh, including multimodal routing based on OpenStreetMap data and OpenTripLanner as the routing engine. And the entrance geocoding was based on Pelias and the vector tiles and map style are based on open map tiles. And I was also briefly participating in an earlier government initiative to fix the national address data set, and they are currently thinking whether they should collect uh, entrance data uh, so that, for instance, fire trucks and ambulances could find the way to the right entrance. When you open GateSolve, you see a map like this. So we have a map of entrances. Uh, here in green, you can see the uh, entrance house numbers and any unit data. And the other feature we have is the address search and delivery routing. So when you search for uh, an address, including a, a unit, uh, then we will find a route using delivery access to, to this specific entrance. Let me now demonstrate how the GateSol application can be used by a delivery driver. When I open the application, I can first see my surroundings and my current location, and whether I'm moving by a walking bicycle or a delivery truck, it can be useful to know how to get to the entrance where I'm supposed to go. Uh, if I'm lucky, uh, I know that I'm supposed to deliver to the entrance C, and I can directly tap it on the map. I can see the photo and some information about the entrance, and I can select it as the destination. The application will then find the route and display any problems on, on pot potential problems on the way. For instance, here the ex explanation mark. If I open the explanation mark, I can see that, okay, there's a gate here and what it looks like, so I can plan in advance. 
and some feedback we got for the 2020 version uh, from home delivery drivers was that the idea is good, but something is still missing. So now something uh, we've added is two-way integration with Allmap. So you can view photos and entrances, uh, photos of entrances and barriers. Uh, you can add also new photos and add comments to, to existing photos. Something else we added uh, was the venue dialog. So now that we have the information for the starter restaurant, for instance, you can get a list of the entrances and loading zones of the venue. And if you choose here one of the entrances as the destination, uh, the map will filter to those routes, the walking routes to, to the specific entrance. Yet something more are the access points. So here, the black dots on the map, uh, there are suggested entry points from nearby streets to the yard area. So the idea is that you would use car from the black dot to the blue uh, unloading zone and then walk from there to the green entrance. As a summary, here is the current data model. So we have a venue A, for instance, has two entrances, uh, one for large deliveries and one for small deliveries and customers. And venue B may use the same entrance, but only for customers, and they will have entrance three then for all of their deliveries. And each entrance can have uh, a loading zone associated with it, and each loading zone can have one or more access points uh, associated to it. And uh, um, who collects and what? In the future, the idea is that delivery recipients and, and drivers would collect data and keep it up to date but to get the ball rolling, um, last year we had 20 school students who worked two weeks each as their summer job. And this year we will have 10 students and they will work for three weeks each. And to give you some numbers of the collected data, uh, there are now over 6,000 images collected of some 5,700 entrances out of 30,000 total in Helsinki in OpenStreetMap and also some 1,700 flights of steps, uh, 600 barriers, and more than 200 info boards. Some difficulties we faced, uh, for instance, to give you an example, uh, the entrances not on building outlines are difficult. Uh, so here the red uh, entrance is in the building passage, and to model that, um, we need to draw building parts because it's not on, on the building outline. We do support building parts, but it's difficult to edit it because you have to be sure that the entrance node belongs to the purple building part, but not on the green building part, even though when you look from above, uh, they will coincide. Here's some ideas for future projects that we have. So, for instance, we could integrate uh, with the OSM editing API or some existing uh, editor uh, to make easier editing of these uh, special features that we, we require. Um, we could link each OSM entrance to a corresponding Wikidata item to create this way uh, a unique identifier, a permanent identifier for each entrance. Um, we could also store these uh, links between venues and entrances in, in Wikidata. And um, yeah, we could also apply this to, to other areas. So for instance, more to the needs of personal accessibility. Uh, for instance, wheelchair routing. And there's many things that could be enhanced uh, in the routing algorithms in Planner.js. So implementing new features based on those. And uh, we invite you to give us feedback, for instance, how and what we should store in OpenStreetMap. And uh, uh, we invite you to map all entrances with us. And we also invite you to participate in, in building a navigation web app.
Uh, the source codes are at GitHub, and you can find more information on the applications on the OSM wiki pages. Thank you, and regards from Helsinki. Well, here we are. We're back with Johan and Tuka. I hope that you enjoyed their talk. We do have only just one question in there, so I want to really, I know you must be doing some deep thinking. So get your questions ready, and I'll start off with the first one. And uh, just uh, for Tuka and, and Johan, please pick who's going to speak, unless you both want to speak at the same time. So the first one is, has it been easy to work with delivery drivers? Now, we heard from other people, um, including yesterday, G Janelle was talking about working with grab drivers. Um, do they not want to be part of the main map? And how do you get buy-in from a higher level? So when you're working with other partners like the postal service or the company, given the fact that you're already working within the government institution. So how would you like to answer that one? Who's first? Well, um, so far we've had made some small tests, like I like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And definitely the drivers are always busy. So we need to make the their contribution as, as easy as possible. And we, we still have to work on that. And but we will have more tests uh, in the fall. Do you want to add something, Johan? Um, yes, I would say definitely the, the core thing is that the drivers are always busy. So obviously, like the, the line we are now pursuing is that, that we are trying to gather the basic basic data so that at, at least in some areas the, the map would be basically OK from, from this point of view. And there would only be like some corrections needed. Uh, and and by providing this kind of valuable service to start with, we are hoping to get buy-in from the companies. And when it comes from up, uh, like higher up, so to speak, that okay, this is a thing that it's okay to spend time on it. Then then maybe we can we can get a bigger slice of the of the driver's time. Also, there's a hope that the delivery recipients have more time. So we have had, for instance, time to have long interviews with them. What are their problems in, in receiving deliveries and so on? Right. And this has certainly been a big year for delivery. Many people uh, given that. So I'm sure that you're ready for a nap. Um, I'm not sure if you're having holidays soon, but with 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 um, with the work with delivery. Um, so somebody was asking about companies. So you're working with individual delivery partners. Um, are you expanding across different kinds of sectors in, in that? Like because you're relatively new ish. Uh, so. Um, I mean, this is not a startup as such. It's a it's a yeah. project from a from a public innovation company. Right. So we have we have been holding kind of wide wide reaching but not very deep discussions with with many different companies in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and so far, we have done some initial piloting, but but more piloting will be coming up in in the in the autumn probably. Uh, going going more into depth with uh, with cooperation with single companies. Right. So no uh, shortage. So no shortage of work for you, I'm sure. Uh, Tuka, please go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to add that, of course, different kinds of delivery companies have slightly different needs. So whether if, if they're uh, delivering to homes, then there's a much uh, wider area of, of entrances to map. But then those are not complicated like this. Like You don't need this complex uh, model of, of uh, multiple entrances and multiple venues and loading places and so on. You just map the, map the houses and, and that's it. Wonderful. Okay, so from partners over to how are you a good citizen in OpenStreetMap? So how are you going to integrate with other uh, other OpenStreetMap things? So there was a question here about um, did you consider adding notes made with um, in, into OSM notes? Um, if yes, uh, why are you against it? After all, it's a much larger audience. So how would you work? How are you working with the OpenStreetMap community, and how might you work in integrating in the future? I think is a really meaty question for you to tie in. Yes, to start with the awesome notes part, um, we could definitely do it if, if people want it. But I think uh, the local community would consider it um, kind of overwhelming to, to add so much uh, micro mapping data. So um, for now, um, it feels better that it's uh, in a separate place. Uh, those who, who want to, to tap into it are, are welcome to do it. And we talk with the local community. Uh, and so on, but uh, yeah, having unstructured notes, uh, uh, thousands of them, it's not very practical, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's called the internet. Uh, 
Um, okay, so we have this other question, which I think is really important when we think about entrances, and this has been brought up in other talks that somebody mentioned. Um, have you, given the fact that you're a public uh, organization, yes, you're stellar focus on the audience and the people you work with, but how might this product or service serve and support people with different, uh, different abilities, if you will, and mobility issues over? Yes, uh, OpenStreetMap gives us a good baseline for that. So whenever we map uh, any information, then it's in, in, the, in this uh, standard format. And then any tool, for instance, for wheelchair access will uh, can make use of this same data and will be making use of this same data. So mm -hmm. um, definitely st starting with the, with the official journey planners for public transport using this data and then mm -hmm. moving to all the um, more, more niche uh, applications as well. Right, and we talked a little bit about growth, right? That you're, um, well, in our chat uh, before, well, well, the talk was going on. So your growth is in country. You have no plans to grow outside your country. Um, and so if people wanted to learn from you, how would they do that? Like, so if somebody, of course they could just look at the code or whatever, but how would you want people to contact you if they said, this is really valuable. I wanna see how it would work in my country. Is that something you thought of, or you're just so deep into the busy year that you had? Um, yeah, I think uh, we need to get the concept working well locally first, but uh, mm -hmm. it's all open source and open data. So um, mm -hmm. we welcome everyone to, to have a look. Viral, uh, um, GitHub issues, and so on, uh, if they have trouble mm -hmm. setting it up for themselves or, yeah. Yeah, and of course, uh, you can also just contact us directly by email and we can set up a meeting and, and, and kind of discuss what the needs are and, and how these tools might, might fit or, or not fit those needs. Wonderful. And um, this, you, said, you mentioned that you had young people come and, and, and add data for it. Are they still involved in the project afterwards or is it just a summer job? Because I think... Uh, so far, it has just been a summer job. We have had some, some of them return for a second summer and, and were very eager to return for a third. <laughs> but, but so far, they haven't been eager enough to do it outside of, of work mm -hmm. hours. Let's see how, right. it, how it progresses. So just you're in Finland, you're in Helsinki, and earlier we talked to somebody who was in Germany, and um, and that was it's always fun to hop countries, and so we always it, virtually it's hard to really understand that um, you know we're we're hopping countries while we have these conversations. So um, tell us a little bit about the OpenStreetMap community in Finland and how do you work with them or not work with them over? Um, I would say there's some. Um, very active but but small um, community, um, mm -hmm. and you can definitely see that it's. I think it's normal to be uh, concentrated in the big cities, and I think Helsinki. Uh, my understanding is that it's one of the most uh, micro map cities cities uh, currently, with mm -hmm. lots of traffic signs and so on. So it's a good place also to to introduce new 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 mapping tasks like. We didn't do this before. Why didn't we map all the entrances already? And uh, now let's see uh, how it grows. Wonderful. So everyone needs to go to Finland and test that theory that it is the most micro map place and help improve the data set. There's one last question here. It says um, they wanted to talk a little bit more about integration of Wikidata, with Wikidata. So I think that's great just to kind of close on the um, how does it work with that over? All right. So um, at, at least my initial idea is that we would create uh, also uh, Wikidata items for each of these entrances. Uh, and this way, when you create a Wikidata item, then you create a, a permanent identifier as well. And then when, when we link this to, to OpenStreetMap, then the entrances also get a permanent identifier where they normally wouldn't have one because okay. there are completely unlabeled entrances. And then um, if you delete the point and add a new one, is it still the same entrance or not? It's uh, difficult to track, but but these uh, wiki items would then be uh, stable. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, what questions did they forget to ask you? What would you want? What else would you want to say about the work that you've learned? Just an open. Well, I think for my part, uh, one thing I was interested in coming to this conference is um, so so we are now saving all the routes and all the basic information on the entrances uh, in OpenStreetMap. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, but some of this data that concerns like what are the what are the uses for which entrance which companies can you reach through this entrance mm -hmm. we are actually currently only saving in our own database and also all the all the photos that we are taking we are not linking those currently to openstreetmap so one thing I, I was hoping to get some feedback on from the community is, well, this is not really a question to, to us, it's more a question to everybody else. Do it. That it is, is, this, is this something you would be interested in, in, in thinking about integrating to the OpenStreetMap data model? Or is this too niche to, to kind of try to bring there? It would just complicate the, <laughs> uh, the amount of data in OpenStreetMap. All right. You just open up the can of worms of how do we add new media data to OpenStreetMap? I hope that you know that your inbox is going to be full. Um, <laughs> well. I think, and also, we do have a post-talk chat place where people can definitely talk verbally about this, and I would hope that uh, um, you do it. But I had a question about all these photos, too. So you're not, so it's in your app. Um, how are you managing privacy, right? And these are public places that you're taking these photos, right? You're not taking, yeah. like, so if I had something delivered, like, let's say I lived in Helsinki, which I don't, and have been there, but haven't, but don't, are you taking a picture of my front door or are you taking pictures of only businesses? It's, a, it's you... a good question. Yeah. It's a, and it's a thing we have had lots of discussions about that. What, what kind of things are off limits? So, so the areas where we are mapping, it's mainly not, you don't have single family houses mainly. And we, we are not interested in taking pictures of the entrances to, to single family houses. So it's more like uh, apartment buildings where you have, you have one stairway to, to many, many apartments. So it's kind of in the public space or you have businesses and their entrances. Uh, and also, of course, we have been uh, like, uh, when we are taking pictures, uh, so far it's mostly been us and then, then the summer workers. And we are strongly encouraging not to take any pictures where, where there, are, there are people visible or, or at least people identifiable. Of course, that's the thing we are also, we obviously have on the backlog to, to automatically blur any, any kind of people that, that might appear in the images. Uh, but it's, all, it's, it's an ongoing discussion and it's an it's a interesting discussion as well that we, which, which things should be considered off limits. Wonderful. Well, you know, people before data, I keep saying it. Um, you know, and that's the humanitarian in me, but it's also the human being person. So um, just thanks so much for, for your presentation and for your intervention about what data should we use or not use. Um, I think there's one last question. I did take a copy of the questions for you to go and, and Johan, you want, might want to keep a copy of those because it doesn't stay on the platform, okay? Um, the last question we had was a wiki data item or a wiki base item? So a little bit more debate for you. Maybe something to be figured out with the Wikidata community, but uh, I think to start, I would go with with Wikidata. They are like there are already some prominent entrances that are included there, and uh, they are not so strict about what is notable. If it's somehow useful, then then you can create an item for it, and especially if we take the photos, then uh, they are uh, identifiable. They have an identity, and I think they could be in the main Wikidata. So I got three things, three summaries. One, if you want to learn more about um, about the work that they're doing in Finland, um, please do contact them and go to the after chat talk. Two, um, they are interested in talking about, are you ready? Data model and new media. Have a nice time. I look forward to a really great diary entry on this. And, um, you know, always happy to host a chat around um, how we uh, deal with the new world or the modern world. And the last one was, how do we work with integrations, you know, and what do we own and not own? So just gentlemen, congratulations on your work. And I'm always glad to see that governments are working with open source and open data um, to be able to support and support communities around the world. And um, with that, do you have any closing comments before we shut down and move on to getting you to the chat so that you can go talk to people about your fun questions that you had for them? Thanks for listening and see you in the chat. No further comments from Johan. <laughs> that's that's a, a good summary from my, my part okay. as well. Okay, well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and have a good rest of your afternoon and let's go to the next sessions.